Hi everybody, Ms. Trouts here. Today we're gonna go over lessons in chunks so that you can understand what my expectations are, what I expect of you, how you can get in touch with me, all the programs that we're gonna be using. Um, I'm super excited because we're gonna go over some things like Google Arts and Culture, where you can see a bunch of art, and just have a lot of fun. We're gonna do some graphics, so we're gonna have some technology, but we're also gonna have some conventional art where you can just use a pencil and draw. So on that note, let's get started and have some fun. I'm starting off by going over what you're gonna see in Schoology and how easy it will be to navigate through the art classroom. Just like our regular classroom at school, we have an emulated Bitmoji classroom. So it's, it looks, and it is, our regular school classroom from Molina Upper. I'm just gonna zoom into it so you can see it. Now, we have a few buttons and we have a few things that we're gonna go over. You'll always see a welcome message right here and other things on the board that I want to explain to you and what we'll be going over. Okay. Now the objective in order to know what I expect of you each day and um, what I'm going to need for you to accomplish, you're going to be able to hit the objective and pow, it pops up. So here's the objective and it says today, for an example, I will be able to navigate through class and understand the expectations of the Zoom and other online learning platforms while in art, techno art or technology, because we'll do a little of both. Speaking of, we're gonna go over these. If you wanna go back to home at any time to get all the buttons, you just have to click home, that little house there. Now, the other cool thing is, we're gonna go over what we would normally in a art classroom, which is the motivation that talks about like the history of art and it just motivates you wanting to do the project. It's just a really cool button right here. Demonstration is when I'm gonna demonstrate the actual lesson. And the closing is just a reminder of what we went over. And we're gonna talk about things I could help you with. And if you have any questions in the chat, and we're gonna go over that expectation too. So that's the closing. Now, here, for your convenience, we have a menu just like, and we're gonna hit home again because it went to the objective. Um, we have examples of buttons right here that you can use. Nearpod, we're gonna use that. And that's just gonna show different lessons. YouTube, you're gonna be able to hit all my lessons if you need to go back. They're all on YouTube. Everything is right there for you. And it'll also be linked directly to the lesson that we need. So that's gonna be easy. Schoology, if you have to get back to the regular Schoology classroom, your classroom, you could just hit this button, Epic. We're gonna introduce some books that go along with the art. So a little cross curriculum here. Sketchpad, very, very um, useful. We're gonna do graphics technology on Sketchpad. It's a free program for you. A lot of my students love it and already use it. And Zoom. So this will bring you to our Zoom link at all times. It's always the same link so you can join our classroom. So I'm gonna escape into the regular view that's it about the Bitmoji Classroom. Now we're gonna go and talk about the folder. You will always, we're gonna keep it simple. You will always be able to see just one simple folder that says what class it is, the lessons for the week and that week. So if we have any upcoming assignments and anything that I wanna talk about, it'll be over here. So it's pretty straightforward. I have made it so everything can go through your Bitmoji Classroom. You have one folder that you have to go to and everything's gonna be in that one folder for that week. And that's about it for how you're gonna see it in Schoology. So I look forward to them moving to the next step. See you then. can start. Hey guys, so we have Miss Trouts up in the building. Can we give her a hi and hello? Hey Miss Trouts. And we're going to go over some of the things that we expect over Zoom and our virtual classroom. First and foremost, we're going to talk about dun, da, da, dun. 
our code of conduct. So we know this one. Let's see if we can say it alongside of us. So first line, I, I choose, choose to, to be, be here. here. I'm I am here, here to, to learn achieve. and achieve. I am responsible for my, my actions. actions. I, I contribute, contribute to a safe, safe respectful, cooperative, cooperative community. community. I, come I come with a with clear, clear mind and healthy body. body. This, this is, is my school. I make it shine. I make it shine. We get some shine. Get some shine. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so going along with our code of conduct, we're now going to move on to our next slide. We're going to talk about some daily expectations, okay? And Ms. Trouts is also going to add in what her expectations are. But we're working together as a special team because we're on one unit together. And this is what we all expect, whether you're in Ms. Trouts' class or in Ms. Tate's class. Okay, first one. You're going to follow your da daily schedule every single day, okay? And I know for specials, that might change. You may not have the same special Tuesday and Thursday, or your schedule might follow Tuesday and Friday, but it's really incredibly important to look at your schedule every day and to know what you have so that you're not missing a Zoom call, okay? Do you have anything to add to that, Ms. Trouts? If um, not, just... just up. Well, just in case they didn't know, they have to be here and they have to be participating on specials. So we will be taking attendance. Um, just make sure they're here and they're engaged. And um, that's all I have to add. Perfect. All right, next one. Participate in all live classes with your teacher and submit all assignments on time, okay? So that means that you are joining on time, you're staying engaged, okay? So that means if there's any polls or questions or exit tickets, or if there's an activity, you're doing all of those things so you can get the most amount of points every single day, okay? You're asking and you're answering any questions and participating in discussions. So that could potentially be what we do on Mondays, our discussions or journal posts or something of the like. So you want to make sure that you're constantly doing those things um, so that you're marked present and that you are fully engaged in the material. Do you have anything to add, Ms. Strauss? No, I think that sounds wonderful. Great. All right. Next one is complete and submit your weekly independent activities on time. So again, there may be times um, on Mondays where we may have a journal post or an independent activity where we're asking you to do that um, separate from our regular live Zoom class. So you wanna make sure that you're looking for that um, posted in the materials. And if not, if you're confused, just make sure you reach out to your teacher either through the classroom, online, you can also uh, send an email, you can send a text message, any of those are um, understandable ways to communicate with your teacher. Okay, we're going to move on to the next slide. So these are important too, which are your Zoom expectations. Okay, first one, you are ready to learn with materials and be free from distractions. Okay, so ready to learn. Let's talk about what that means. Um, Ms. Trouts, do you want to talk about that first? Ready to learn? Um, definitely. I need my students, and, and I know you do too, Miss Tate, you need your students to be focused and ready, and they're on screen. Um, all my students, I'm going to ask that they wear headphones so that they're, the outside world is not conflicting with them learning. And they're sitting up, they're not falling asleep, they're ready to learn. Perfect. All right, we're going to talk about the next one is mute your microphone until it is time for you to speak. Raise your hand to participate, okay? Um, and we are going to clarify in each of our classrooms what that means. But whenever you come on to a Zoom call, you're going to make sure that your microphone is muted. That way it's not distracting. If the teacher um, has something to say or if one person is speaking, you're not being distracted by other noises and it can get really distorted and confusing of what's going on. So you want to make sure that you mute that microphone. Um, and when you're raising your hand, there's actually a cool, and we're going to get to this a little bit later, but there's like a cool option. Whoops, let me go back. 
um, there's a cool option in Zoom where you can actually raise your hand. So if right now I was talking and Ms. Trounce wanted to raise her hand, she would simply raise her hand by using the following button down at the bottom. Boom. And then I know that Ms. Trouts is ready to speak and she has something to say. All right. And that's going to signal to your teacher um, or anybody in the chat moderating the chat that you're ready to, to talk. And that thumbs up that she just gave makes everyone understand that you know what's going on. Okay. Ms. Trouts, do you have anything to add to that? No, just said, um, I think that was said beautifully. And we're going to make sure that Every time we want to talk, it's when the teacher says, now's the time to ask questions. Um, I think that's very important. Um, just like you would in my class, I would like you to, I would say to you, anyone have any questions? And that's your cue to ask questions and raise your hand like so with the reactions icon like so. So then after you raise your hand, then I would know you have a question. I would move on to you and say, hey. What's your question? And that's it. Awesome. All right, dress appropriately. So we'll talk about that a little bit. We wanna make sure that you don't have to have your, uh, your uniform on. That's not necessary, but you do wanna make sure that you have you know, some type of shirt on, you're ready to go, you're ready to learn, that we look like, um, that we're just ready to be in the, in the world of learning. Do you have anything to add to that, Ms. Charles? Yeah, just as it's, um, you don't need you dressed like you would on Sunday church, or you don't have to be dressed in your uniform, but all of your body must be covered. You must have a regular t-shirt on, um, pants on, and ready to go, because we are in a world where it's different because it's virtual learning, and some people have gotten used to just wearing whatever, but in class, we're still going to have respectful outfits on. And I think our students won't have a problem with it. I think they're fantastic with that. Don't you, Ms. Tate? I agree. And the only thing to add to that is that all Zoom calls will be recorded as well. Um, so there won't be a question as to whether or not um, somebody is dressed appropriately, you know, because we will be, we'll, we will be recorded. So, okay. All right, we're gonna move on. Next one, turn on your video, okay? And we're gonna put this in parentheses only because if you feel comfortable, we'd like to see your face, all right? We miss you guys just as much as you miss school and your friends and all of that. So we wanna see your face, um, you know, but we also understand. And if you want us to respect your privacy, we understand, so, but, We'd really like to see your face and we'd like to see you participating and excited. You know, expression is everything. We've been, unfortunately, had to hide our face because of, you know, COVID and everything with our masks. So, um, I mean, I'd love to see your smiles and I'd love to see you guys um, using those wonderful expressions. Right. And I would like to see everyone participating. And if you're not going to have your camera on, there's a lot more participation during the chat. So I would, you would have to be on the chat way more if you're not gonna show your face or on camera, just to prove that you are participating. So um, that's that. Absolutely. Next one, use the chat to answer or ask questions that are related to the lesson. Okay, so we are not on the chat, um, just talking with our friends. Okay, we wanna make sure that the chat time we're not distracted and we're really focused on whatever the lesson is because now that we're in this online environment, um, it's gonna be much more concentrated on the material and there's gonna be a lot less room for us to um, be talking outside the norm. So, cause we really want you guys to learn. We want you to you know, move the compass and we really want you to get the full experience. So there's not gonna be an incredible amount of time to be talking just out of nowhere with your friends. Sounds great, Ms. Tate. Great, last one, hand signals. Okay, if you need to be excused or if you have a question, okay, we kind of showed that already, but you need to make sure that you're raising your hand, okay, and not just here, because I may not see this, you know, you wanna make sure that you're raising your hand in the chat. So can you show that, Ms. Trout? Perfect, just like that, I'm gonna know that I need to get to you. 
It may not be right away, okay, if I'm finishing a thought or I'm finishing a slide, okay, but know that I will get to you, okay? And the same thing, I need to know that you're listening and you're understanding what's going on. So if I say, do we all understand? If you know, you're going to throw a thumbs up. So can you show us what that looks like, Ms. Strauss? Boom shakalaka. There is the thumbs up, okay? Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we move on to our next slide? Um, no, they might have other hand signals with theirs. I know I'm limited to two. So I know that there might be an actual hand that goes like this. I just put the clapping hand up. Okay. So, okay, but as long as their hands, if they only have this one, that's fine. But And this one is to say, I know what you're talking about. I'm good with that. Okay? Cool. All right. Excellent. All right, we're going to move on from Zoom expectations, okay? So now what we're each going to do is we're going to practice using the Zoom chat box, okay? You're going to type your favorite color in the chat box. Mm. And I totally understand. <laughs> I totally understand. And I know it seems like Ms. Chats is real excited too because, you know, art, colors, all that. Um, and this is all new stuff. So don't think that, you know, Zoom is completely new to you. It's new to the teachers too. It's not something that we've had to use. So a lot of these features we had to be taught how to use. And so we're trying to help you um, learn how to use those features too. Okay, so we're gonna pause right there and we're gonna take a second to type in our favorite color in the chat box. So ready, pause. And we're back. Okay, fabulous. I am so excited to hear about all those cool colors. And maybe, I don't know, Miss Chats, what do you think? We should add those in like our Bitmoji classrooms. You we know? should. I should. Because my favorite color is orange, but I was so excited to see everybody else's favorite colors. Me too. My favorite is blue, both to wear and to decorate with. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on. We're almost done, guys. You're doing great. All right, so we're moving on. Whoa, I got too excited. Ah, okay, so talking about the chats and discussions and things like that, we wanna talk a little bit about accountable talk, okay? And what this does is it helps you to relate to the people around you and to feel like um, not only were you heard, but they were heard too, okay? So one of the things um, when we're doing a discussion or we're doing a chat, okay, you wanna make some connections, okay? So one of the things is this reminds me, right? And it relates your connection with somebody else's experience, okay? Do you have anything to add to that, Ms. Schultz? No, I mean, I definitely, no, I think that that was awesome. That's a good way of, of saying accountable talk, yes, and the experience of others is definitely going to be affected by how others treat each other. So I'm going to remain absolutely positive, and no one wants to get kicked off the chat, so they would. I would assume right. that they would be absolutely positive, too. I mean, our students are awesome this way, so... Definitely. I'm looking forward to accountable talk. Yeah. And that brings us to our next thing is questions and wanderings, right? So I wonder why. So a lot of times we can kind of get stuck in our thought process and what we think is right or wrong or maybe somewhere in the middle. So one way that we can kind of get out of that right or wrong is by questions, right? And wonderings. Like, I wonder why. And you could say, I wonder why um, this person feels like this, or I wonder why um, this particular uh, event happened like this, right? And it takes the blame out of it, and it makes it more out of curiosity, right? You're kind of curious, like, why is it that way, right? And then we can start to understand one another a little bit easier rather than um, kind of an accusatory kind of way. And that can make learning really fun, actually, when you come at it almost like a, um, the people that look at dinosaur bones, paleontologist, or somebody who discovers something. Okay, we'll go to the next one unless you have something to add. Nope, that's good. Cool. Listen to others. I see what you're saying. So this is a great way of um, acknowledging what somebody's saying and agreeing with them. Okay, I see what you're saying. 
you know, and you can either use a but or I can see what you're saying and agree, right? So this kind of lets that other person know that what they're being, uh, what they're saying is not only being heard, but acknowledged as well, because we all want to be acknowledged at some point. I use this one a lot, Miss T. I always say, I see what you're saying. And I put butts on it too. I know you've done this with me. <laughs> so. so we use this a lot with each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then add on to what others are saying. What you say, said made me think, okay? So I use this a lot too to draw upon my experiences. What you said made me think about, right? And you can kind of draw um, from your own experiences to create a relationship and a sense of community with that person. Um, again, it makes them feel heard. So there doesn't always have to be this accusatory tone, right? There's a lot of times that you can hear what somebody is saying and maybe not feel the same way, but you can still make them feel validated and express what your thoughts and feelings are. That way everybody feels like they're free to share. I like that because yeah. um, I like that, that we would pr promote sharing because sharing is going to be great in both of our subjects, especially when we go over each other's artwork and you know when somebody does a dance if if you like what they're doing and then um if you're critiquing sometimes someone else can say what you said made me think mm -hmm. and then they can say it in a nice way so definitely okay cool all right so if we don't have any questions about that i think i'm ready to move on how about you yep Cool. Setting up your virtual workspace. So this is going to look a little different for art versus dance. Okay, every day you're going to begin your school day by starting up your computer and logging into Schoology. Okay, so this is going to start directly from morning meeting all the way through your reading, writing, and math courses in the morning into your science and or enrichment courses in the afternoon. Okay, so you want to make sure you're logging in especially, especially, and let me put this out there, you have to be on for your morning meeting because that is how you get logged in for your uh, attendance, all right? And attendance is incredibly important. Even though it's just a virtual environment, it's important that you're there so that you get marked uh, present, okay? Um, so I know for art, you might need something different. I'm going to talk about dance real quick, and then I'm going to let you talk about art, Ms. Strauss, okay? So for dance, all right, you might want to do this in your living room, um, if it's nice outside and if you have a backyard and you feel comfortable, you could do it out in the backyard. You're going to want some space to move because I'm probably going to be doing some yoga. So you're going to need a space to stretch. Maybe you put a blanket on the floor. Okay. We're also going to be doing some basic dance moves too. So you might need to move furniture out of the way a little bit, um, you know, or find the most clear space in your house. And typically I'm going to try to stay within six feet side to side and front to back. So that there's not any super crazy moves so that you have to really move a lot of furniture out of the way. Um, and that's about what my space will look like. How about your virtual space, Ms. Strauss? So they're going to definitely need a desk, a table, somewhere to work on. They need a chair. They need to be sitting up. They need to be facing their computer when we're doing digital art and working on Zoom. And they're going to need a pencil and a piece of paper sometimes. So it's going to change depending if we're just doing graphic design or we're doing conventional art where we're using a pencil. But we've gone over a video with that already. So, or we're going to be doing that second. So they'll see exactly what they need. Perfect. And that should be on the material section of the board. Um, or it'll be set up in the lesson already. So you guys are going to know what you're going to need um, ahead of time, and that'll be um, detailed out for you, okay? But just to, to be aware, you're going to need some space for dance, and it sounds like you're going to need a non-movable spot for art where you're free to create. Mm -hmm. Correct. Fantastic. What if I get stuck? So if you need help with tech, um, I know that your teachers are talking about keeping a log cheat sheet. 
Okay. And that's basically how to get to, you know, one particular um, site versus another. Okay. There's how to videos that are on not only your course page, but also the school group page too. how to get from, you know, one piece of Schoology to the other. You can email your teacher. So if it's specifically with dance or art, you can email us. If it's some other type, um, you can email those teachers. And then there's always the option to call or text. Okay. Those will be available for you. Okay, what happens if I miss a class or assignment? So if you know you will need to miss a class or submit a late assignment, all right, you will contact your teacher via Schoology to inform them of your situation, okay? Um, if you miss a class, you want to watch the class recording. So kind of like what Ms. Strauss and I are doing now, we're recording our assignments and we're recording our lessons. So you're going to want to watch that when it's available and complete all of the assignments for that day related to the recording, okay? And if you miss an assignment, you wanna make sure that you submit it in Schoology ASAP, okay? And you will still receive a grade. So we need to make sure that we're staying vigilant because you don't wanna to get to the end of, um, you know, our online sessions or the end of the marking period or the report period, and then you have a ton of things to make up, right? It can really add up. So you want to make sure you're staying on top of it so you don't have all that stress and overload, okay? Do you have anything to add, Ms. Trotz? No, I loved how you put it. That was great. Perfect. And then here's some of the apps we're going to use this year um, for art and dance. So we are already using Zoom, okay? But I know that Ms. Trouts and I are doing a lot of recordings, um, and we're going to be using YouTube. We're also going to use Nearpod as well. Um, I know that Ms. Trouts is going to be using Sketchpad. We're both going to be using Google Arts and Culture. And I'm so, so excited because there's so many cool things on there with dance. And you guys will see that video later on in our Zoom call. Um, and I can't wait because there's so much cool information on there, um, both for art and dance. Epic. So if there's any books that you want to read about for either art or dance, you know, we can assign those too. And maybe that could be like, I don't know, a little extra credit. What do you think, Ms. Trout? I think that would be awesome. Cool. And then we're already on Schoology. So you know that you need to be logging in every day on that. So these are some of those. Both of us um, are going to explain our uh, Bitmoji classrooms. And there's a menu on Ms. Trout's page. It'll be on the right. It's a blue menu bar with all of these links on it. And on my page, it's going to be on the left with all of the links connected to um, each of these little icons. So you're going to be good to go. And but, you know, most of all, let's get to this next part. Let's work together. And we're going to have a great school year this year, regardless of whether or not it's online. We're really here for you. And we really want to make those connections with you and support you throughout this whole process because we know it sometimes it's not always been easy. Absolutely not. I agree, Miss Tate, and I think working together would be awesome. And even if you find a dance that you really love and later that day after class, you can show your siblings if you have siblings or um with art, if you find a project that you love to do, maybe you could share that with your siblings, but after the class, and then, so you can focus on learning the dance or the art, and then later you could work with your family members and maybe do them um, as something to relax or have fun. And the good thing about being all virtual and using Zoom is that you'll be able to talk to others and ask questions in those chat rooms and we'll be able to discuss how how we think and how we feel about certain things in a positive way and that'll be a nice way of working together of that well and just like us you know we worked together most of the pandemic and i don't think i could have gotten through that without you so this is a sense of community we're building community even though we're not in the building so and we care a lot about you guys and we want to see the best for you. So, and if this is what we make it, we can make it in a fantastic year. And I think that's what it definitely can be. Agreed, Tate. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you either. And relationships and positive relationships mean a lot. So we can form them with everybody. So, okay.
Are we moving on? Or I think that's it. Oh my I gosh, that flew by. What fun. What fun working together is. Okay, so I am going to um, end. And Tate, are you ending also now? Yeah, I'm going to actually go over with my kids, my Bitmoji classroom. Um, but I think our time is done. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I'll miss you, Tate. I'm going to go over my Bitmoji classroom also. All right. I'll see ya. All right, bye. All right. I'll let me stop recording because I'll keep you on. This is good because... We are on Google Arts and Culture still, and I wanted to show you some of the really cool features that we'll be using. One is you can have a walkthrough. So when you see this element right here, when you see this little man right here, that means that you can have a virtual tour of this gallery, and it's really cool. So the other thing is I have picked street art just to go over and use as an example i love street art graffiti street art um, when they turn it into murals and it's actually art that's when i love it this is a beautiful piece right here all the blues and the teals and the greens and the way her shirt it folds on here and it's a little girl and she might be in an urban environment um like we are so it's on a giant wall you can see the wall in the background i love it so when <clears throat> I scroll down, I can see where the actual museum is, and this one's in Italy, so it's called Emergence, and it's a modern gallery just to, just to show a bunch of street art, right? And you can see here's an exhibit online, and then all these exhibits. Now I'm going to have links to everything so that you know how to get to it, but you can see the urban art, it's city art and you can see the graffiti, but they're really changing this graffiti into a mural. And why I thought this was really cool is Camden and Philadelphia, we have a awesome amount of murals on our buildings. So I thought, why not show them how you can walk through things? So now I've scrolled all the way down past these pictures of all these ex beautiful exhibits and now I'm going to explore. So I just want to show you some of the things you can do. If I click explore, here I am in the actual street and you can see I can walk through and look at all the artwork in this little town in Italy. So I thought that was so neat, like to actually get away <laughs> from we're all stuck in our homes right now, so we could actually get away. Here is in a subway, and if I want to look at, this is a yellow building here, if I want to turn around, look at the art, I would move the arrow. You can see that it's street art, and it's depicting an urban environment. You can see all these buildings, these high rises forming through all this spray paint. It's fantastic. You can see the artist's name, then you can click down here and you can see more art. Oh, that's a chicken. I have no idea <laughs> what it means. I'd have to look into that, but it's a rotisserie chicken. And this is a spice that Italians use. I know it myself. Um, it's thyme and they put it on turkeys. So I'm gonna go back to the original. I can zoom in, zoom out. Look at that, that's so neat. So it's like you're actually there. So I just wanted to show you that that's what you can do in all these explorations. You can go in all these areas of art. So I thought, how cool. Here's another, something that I really think is really cool. I love the blues, the bubbles, everything about it. I love how his shirt is just 
it seems like there's just bits and pieces of him. It's so exciting. So, um, and he's just like cartoonish, so he's not real. And he's in purple. How neat. He's got pasta in his hand. That's a, a macaroni. <laughs> oh, I love Italian art. So now I just wanted to show you that. And I went back to Google um, Arts and Culture and I went back to the homepage. I'm going to give you that link for that particular art. But right now we have games, museums, artwork, places. There's so much to see here um, if you just wanted to go and see something in the outside world. So we'll go into that more, but for right now, I'm gonna stop there, let you check it out, have fun.